Now, more than ever, teams must come together and work together to solve big challenges, and Trello is here to help. Trello, part of Atlassian's collaborative suite, is an app with an easy-to-understand visual format, plus tons of features that make working with your team functional and fun. With Trello, you can work with your team wherever you are, whether it's at home or in an office. Keep your workflow going from wherever you are with Trello. Try Trello for free and learn more at Trello.com. That's T-R-E-L-L-O dot com. Working remotely can be a challenge, especially for teams that are new to it. How do you deal with your work environment being the same as home while staying productive? At a time when teams must come together more than ever to solve big challenges, Trello's here to help. Trello, part of Atlassian's collaborative suite, has been powering remote teams globally for almost a decade. Trello keeps everyone on the same page, helping teams communicate, focus, and connect. Try Trello for free and learn more at Trello.com. That's T-R-E-L-L-O dot com. Dan and Rand and Jay will share tales of folks so unaware they lack in grace and sometimes choose the life they choose will make the news. Breaking down each epic fail in Florida, there's half price bail. I'm happy to say they couldn't make this up. Dumb, dumb, so listen dumb, to dumb, our podcast dumb, jam dumb, with co host Arm and dumb, Dan. Dumb, and Bert, don't be a jerk. Dumb, Cause when the music gets the funny dumb, hits, dumb, we are gonna take you down. Stick around. Make a sound, down, it's Dumb People Town. Hey townies, welcome to another episode of Dumb People Town. Dumb. Population you. Population if you can Eddie Ift. You cannot spell the word ift without part of the word riff. Riff? I don't know. Anyway. Riff. Uh, this is one of our favorite people in the world of comedy, and every time we see him, it is The just... extra F in his last name is for funny. That is. Yeah. The, uh, the extra F is not necessary, too. It right? is not necessary. It Some is... guy told me that like a year ago. He goes, hey, you know you don't need that second F, and I Like went, you were thinking you needed it. Well, I went, oh, I've wasted a lot of time. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, Signing I, I, things? That's a backup F in case the yeah. first F goes out. Hey, one of those Fs is silent, you asshole. Uh, yeah. But Thank you don't you. hit the, the if it was just IFT, it, it's the exact same name. It is, but like, hey, you don't need that e- that extra. E- I don't understand. suggest that you put it in there just because you thought you needed. It. I didn't put it in. Somebody in Ellis Island put it in. Exactly. Like, yeah. <laughs> well, dude, I'm so happy you're here. Uh, I want to jump right in. We'll talk about stuff that you got going on, but uh, I-, I know you are uniquely designed to understand this because a lot of times you make fun of yourself for doing stupid things. Mm-hmm. Uh, it is one of the things I love about you is that you have an awareness of the dumb shit that you actually do and have done. And yeah, no. it's all I have. Yeah, it's all you. It's all you got. <laughs> it's, all uh, it's all I have. Uh, it's a brand at this point. Yeah. Uh, well, but we think that the world is getting dumber. I, if it could pop, you've been dumb for a long time. But yeah. we think the world is getting dumber. They're, well, ma- they're the, matching me. They're catching up. They're, right? They're, is it catching uh, up to you? I started a trend. You did. Yeah. He's a four. He's a pioneer. <laughs> Dan Van Kirk. Hi, yes. buddy. What's up, man? Uh, so we got Eddie Ift here. I'm sure uh, that someone has sent a great story for us to just we do. dig in with. We got him. one sent in by Starla Mint at It's Just Starla down in St. Louis, Missouri. I love her. She's great. Mom she uh, came out, uh, I think, last Your time we show. were there together. Yeah. And she came out to on my tour. I yeah, love she's it. Awesome. She's a awesome. lot, by the way, a lot of people in St. Louis said that they were looking forward to going and seeing you when oh, they, well, when they nice saw us. I hope yes. they all made it to the show. And I'm sure uh, they did. Pub Patron. This is the headline. Pub patron wins $61,000 after prank falls flat. Wins in a court case? I wouldn't call it a prank if you had to be sued over what happened. Yeah. Well, prank harassing. is like something you pull. You've pulled pranks yeah. on your friends. Yeah, I used to love pranks. Yeah. What's yeah, the what's the craziest prank? How do you end prank? a prank war? Someone just gives I up? I used to do a lot to Artie Fuqua. You know Artie? Yeah. 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 I, uh, How is he? I, he's, he's great. He's worth a lot of money now. Mm-hmm. Yeah. He yeah. Had that, uh, uh, yeah. The yeah. accident with yeah, uh, yeah. He's he's Tracy Morgan. Morgan. Yeah. He's... Uh, is he physically okay? He's, yeah, he's fine. He's. I mean, Artie was never... Mentally okay. No, no. so so now he's yeah, so now he's fun to same. fuck with. Yeah. yeah, he uh one time I did a show and he was late and he I was supposed to close and he was supposed to go on before me but he was late and he mm-hmm. called and he goes just go on first. So when I was on, I said when Artie shows up, like ten minutes into his act, everybody leave. <laughs> 
just you got the audience the in on it. The entire audience walked out of his show. That's that great. is such a great prank, and he had no clue. Why. He had no idea, but a, a like a table came in late and didn't know, so, so they, they sat stayed. down, and he tried to talk them into coming up front. To like finish the show, <laughs> they, they so he finished. That's how much. That's how much a narcissist comedian. He's are. like, I had. To we're finish. like, even if the whole crowd leaves, I gotta yeah. finish. Where gotta were do. you? Are you backstage? Just I am dying laughing this, so hard, and prank. then I keep going outside and seeing the audience, and they're outside, and they're You're all like, I love I'm you like, guys. Shh, be quiet. That's, that's so I fun. love that you did that. Thing. And great I, prank. I also one time at Stand Up New York told the audience he was on his way. I said, when he performs, do not laugh, no matter what. <laughs> Just stare <laughs> at so him. Mean. <laughs> and he, he had a meltdown. And then I had him on my podcast and we talked about all these things. And then at the end of the podcast, I had the guy that records say that he didn't record the podcast. <laughs> So I've done this to him like I mean, just over so, and over. Okay. So he could have sued you for yeah. sixty. Well, no, no, so no. Funny. But that we we highlight these to say that this is something you do to your friend, friend. who you love friend. for yeah. fun. Yeah. I'm guessing this them. is more. This was a little more. Let's get into, we'll get into this. Into it. A, a drunken prank involving, which is all. I mean, all, cannot right. be good. Is right. ne- is never well thought out. Dan, would you consider the two guys in Chicago racing on a sidewalk, and then one guy runs into a post? A is, prank? It's not really a prank, but it is drunken. Like, Par for decision. the course. It is a, not a prank. That was a contest. You guys know what's going on at Wrigley right now? What? what? They're called cup snakes. Have you heard of this? No. Everybody in these sections, it's only in the bleachers. They all they hide their cups down by their feet, and they stack them up together until they literally get like 100 or 200 <laughs> together. And then somebody holds them up in there, and then everybody starts yelling, cup snake. And then... <laughs> If, oh if it gets big God. enough, they'll pull that they want the cup that's on the very end. They'll pour beer in, and then they'll let it bend over and like start pouring it into people's mouth. No, and the cups when you stack them up are like maybe a quarter of an inch, and these things get like twenty feet long, which is what three hundred. <laughs> great! Oh and so, my God! By the way, the the, cu- the cubs are good. Right. This is something you would do in Bad the because well, you remember in the seventies, the bleacher bums used to do a deal where they'd have somebody start in the left field and right field foul poles. Get on the wall and then race each other to the center, <laughs> which is where they put the basket up so that people would stop falling onto the field. <laughs> that's that's, that's why the basket's lower than the wall. That's and ridiculous. So I did not know the, that. The the uh, ushers and like security, they they then it's a whole thing. They don't you don't get kicked out because it's the bleachers. Right. They just walk up and take the cup snake from you, and then everybody like tongue and cheek booze, and then they wait until someone builds another one. That's right, man. And the cups. <laughs> It's, it's out of control. There's shirts. Ever. There's shirts there that say the Chicago Cups. <laughs> <laughs> and, Dude, uh, yeah. Please tell me you were talking about this on stage. Oh, I haven't really? talked about this you at all. Absolutely, Dan, it's, it's unreal. It and is brilliant. There's a faint like Barstool Chicago has been like retweeting these things. So then they got a cease and desist letter from the Cubs <laughs> saying if you keep this up, we will no longer have any future relationship with you. Wow. They have no relationship with them at all. And then the Cubs went as far to be like, we have a. We've talked to other MLB teams, and they also think they wrote, this is BS, one of whom are the Cardinals. Now, I love you guys, but why would any Cubs fan care what if a the Cardinals, Cardinals organization nobody. is anti what they're nobody. doing? Dan, you know what's going to happen. They're going to build a giant Cub snake, and they're going to pour like beer into a seven-year-old's mouth. That's it. Yeah. That well, will happen. Dude, it will get caught on camera, at, and then that'll be right. the end of at the At the time I, we're recording this, the Cubs are playing in San Francisco. They built a like 35-foot-long Cub snake in San Francisco last night, and the ushers there thought it was awesome. They're <laughs> Cool with Cubs. San, San Francisco. What were you going to say? My favorite is that they wrote this letter and they're like, by the way, Cardinals don't like this either. <laughs> right. Exactly. You guys oh. need to, hey. It gets one cool. level better. So this Barstool Chicago place, they then got contacted by a commenter on their website and their message boards. And he's like, hey, I work for the Cubs. I, I'm a security guy. I can yeah. tell you how they yeah. feel about us. So they brought the guy in and did gangland style, <laughs> like covered no. his face no. in masks. So you can't feel it. But the Cubs, no. they're, they know. There's only a few people who work there, That's right. so they fired the guy the very next day. <laughs> Come on. And the handle that he goes by is Ligma Ballsack. Ligma. So then in the email, nope. the Cubs are like, you guys are really going to side with somebody named Ligma, Ligma Ballsack? And then the people were like, you're the Cubs, and you just wrote an email no. using the words Ligma, Ligma Ballsack. Ballsack. So then 
in the bleacher bands, people will hold up cup, sna- cup snakes, and then people start yelling, lick, lick my, my ball sack. That's hilarious. <laughs> Wait, this I, might have to be instead of the story. Like, I, I no, almost no, no, That's like, the end of it. That's the end of it. No, that's the end of it. Well, let's, let's, let's hear it. Just it's, set it up, it and then more. we'll take a little break, and then we'll... Uh, <laughs> sorry to derail. Six, that is that. so amazing. I've been holding this in, and no one knows outside of the bleachers that this is even happening, but they act like it's the biggest deal. It is, though. Okay, well, let's get into this. Cup snakes. A drunken prank involving pork chops... Almost cost Russ Lukak a grilling worth thousands of dollars in court yesterday. Mm-hmm. Almost cost him? Yes. <laughs> After winning a meat raffle at his local hotel. Dan's won, won a it. meat raffle. I love a good meat raffle. Have you ever mm. done, entered a meat no, raffle? No, but I'm in Australia a lot, and they always have a meat raffle. Do yeah. they? Meat yeah. raffles do, When great. you have sex with a woman for the first time, do you just tell her she won the meat raffle? <laughs> yeah. Depends on how confident Or if you have you sex are. with a guy. Yeah, right. he yeah. won the meat raffle. Yeah. Or uh, you won his yeah. meat raffle. Mm-hmm. At his, he won a meat raffle tray at his local hotel on November 3rd, 1997, and with at least 15 schooners warming his belly, Mr. Lukak strapped pork chops to his feet when he was told he'd be barred from buying more beer because he wasn't wearing shoes. So they were like, hey, you're out. We got to kick you out. Why? You don't have shoes on. I oh, do yeah. Yeah. Now. And then I he did tied now. pork chops that he had just won in a meat raffle to his own feet and wore them as shoes. But, okay. By the way, that and tying a pork chop to your feet is far more difficult than tying your yeah, shoes. Yeah, I don't know what he tied with. Maybe some bacon. That's what I was wondering as I well. I want him to tie <laughs> <laughs> with bacon. This is Shoelaces. how. If you told me this is how John Krakauer got down Everest once people were dying up there and into thin air, he just he strapped on two, two pork chops and slid down the <laughs> right the, right past Beck Weathers, yeah. face down in the snow. He slid down the Kumbu ice. What a <laughs> reference, no, Doctor. Yeah. You want me to drop Doc. a Yusuka Namba yeah, on you if God. I have to? By the way, the South Pole. Just for the record, Sandy Hill Pittman. No, she she's carried got a this guy carrying the machine. Pet? My next door neighbor. What? Yeah. Sandy Hill Pittman's your next Was, was. We're very good friends. Oh, my God. Well, Sandy Hill now. Oh, yeah. Oh, she she got got divorced? Yeah. Yeah. Used to work Uh, for MTV. Bob Pittman owned MTV. Well, here's my other question to you. I'm sure she got a lot of positive feedback after that. Oh, yeah. People loved her. (laughs) her. Yeah, yeah, yeah. (laughs) She had one of her Sherpas carry a fax machine up to the top of this. Um, So he puts on pork chop shoes. Mm Mm-hmm. Then he proceeds to walk around the Let's call them what the they bar. are, pork chop slippers. Fair enough. <laughs> Slides. <laughs> pork chop slides. slides. Mules. Uh, <laughs> then he proceeds to walk around the bar. That is when the meat's greasy residue uh-uh. caused Troy Michael <laughs> Boron <laughs> to slip and fall. So a guy walking behind him who doesn't realize that he's in the pathway <laughs> of a guy who just walked. You're in a pork chop. I wait. love how you guys are calling this guy dumb, and I'm like, this guy's a genius. <laughs> wait, Dan just called it a pork chop wake. You gotta Which, by the way, is what it's called when the guy dies mm-hmm. and you have an open cast at viewing. Pork chop wake. Because mm-hmm. if that guy were to die, you Slip definitely- and fall and died, you'd have you a pork, pork chop Pork chops right. on his feet. I'm <laughs> thinking if you send him down like the wheelchair ramp, this guy's got a really fun so, ride. So, wait, guys, this is not the guy with pork chops on his feet who slipped no, and fell. No, the guy, the man who a guy who went him. in his pork yeah, chop Troy wake. Troy Michael Bowron. Yeah. <laughs> who you know says his name twice every time he introduces him. <laughs> What's your name? Troy Michael, Michael Boron. Boron. <laughs> you Boron. Um, it caused him. That, I'm going to read this full sentence. He's like a I bully. I feel bad and a moron. for the guy, but it has a like uh, cork to it that you would only find in like a Coen Brothers movie. Okay. <laughs> so here's the full sentence. But the greets the greet. But the meat's greasy residue caused Troy Michael Boron to slip and fall, breaking his left arm and destroying his career in upholstery. <laughs> <laughs> Look, I, I, feel for him, I his saw passion. my. <laughs> if that's his passion. I feel for him, but it's such a cute little left. Turn. I saw my entire upholstery career <laughs> flash before oh my, my eyes broke when my I arm. fell down in that bar. Bethany Hamilton is still surfing on the world tour with one arm. Yeah. I am sure this guy <laughs> exactly. can still upholster with one, <laughs> one arm. arm. Right. He I think get, he's get lo- back on I that and around looking for a listen, win. In listen, listen, listen. You hear what that is? That's, That's the, the sound, sound of one, one arm upholstering. I hear you. God damn it. <laughs> Slip and fall, breaking his left arm. Well, and he, it's not like his arm his is amputated. Career in upholstery. It didn't just end his career, it, it destroyed, destroyed his, his career. That might be his scissor fingers, though. The one <laughs> that's that's that. a great point. If you're not cutting, if you can't cut. The John Lee Inn in Sydney South and its licensee, Kelly Wells, were ordered to pay Troy Michael Boron $61,000. 
$515 in damages for failing to clean up the mess. Yep, it's a slip and fall, man. Yes. Did, did you say, is this in Australia? Yeah. Sydney. Yeah, I knew it. Yeah, I knew it's, it. It's, yeah, I know. This is dumb, you drunk schooner, in Australia. Yeah, yeah. 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 But yeah. this is like every me, night Raffle. there. Right, this yeah. is not a this crazy... done a lot of stuff. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I, I practically live there. It's it's That's every night. It's yeah. a slippery slope, as they say, when you <laughs> allow way, people to put If you this. are in Australia and you are at a bar, you look down first and check for pork chop grease and just be like, are we clear? Are because we clear? There are so many things that'll kill you or ruin your That's upholstery not. career in <laughs> Australia. That's not poor job, Grace. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so the Denali Inn, they were they had to pay over sixty one thousand dollars in damage for failing to clean up the mess. By the way, is that what his upholstery <laughs> career is worth? <laughs> Well, one that's been destroyed. And do you have insurance that covers this? Which New South Wales District Court Judge Anthony Puckeridge said mm-hmm. posed a foreseeable risk to patrons. Here's where it Puckeridge t- is what your asshole maybe, does. Maybe he upholstered with like his choice of leather was pig, yeah. mm-hmm. yes. and this mentally affected him. It of destroyed, his, destroyed him. Eddie, it destroyed his upholstery career. <laughs> Mr. I can't look at another leather pig leathered upholstery. Mr. Lucock. That's our guy who yeah. put on the pork chop <laughs> shoes. Was also sued by Mr. Bullron. Mm-hmm. But he, he got off scot free mm-hmm. after the judge found he did not breach any duty of care to his mate it's of not, 15 it's years. Not, it's not his responsibility right. that the floor be clean. Right. Mm-hmm. So Mr. Bullron did not get his second lawsuit against Lucock. Lucock and Bullron. Lukak and Boron. It is the Don't Australian Rizzolian Isles. I'm the, just thinking these are some really fatty pork chops <laughs> as well. Oh, yeah. A lot of grease. The Boron run run, the Boron run. This is why Mr. Boron was playing in a pool competition when he fell. <laughs> so a billiards competition. So, like, he fell. This is what's really funny. <laughs> he fell in a pool. He went, went flying, flying in the air and chalk. Like, he dusted up some chalk. Yeah, he went LeBron style. <laughs> <laughs> he was playing in a pool competition when he fell. At that time, he was aware that Mr. Lucock, the pork chop shoe man, was walking <laughs> near him, but did not. But Boron did not complain to staff. So <laughs> you so, had your chance. Right, right. right. They, they said that Mr. Boron joined in on the laughter and may even have joined in on the general pantomime that developed when pieces of pork chop disintegrated and were thrown around the room. <laughs> Wait, but how is it what a is pantomime? Going on in this how place? is it a pantomime? All right, should we take a Tuesday? Should we take a break before we, we hit the break. end? All right, let's yeah. take a break, and when we come back, we're gonna hit the end of this thing with uh, Eddie. If there's pork chops being flown around, this is Dumb People Town. Stay with us. Stick around, make a sound. There's more Dumb People Town. Working remotely can be a challenge, especially for teams that are new to it. How do you deal with your work environment being the same as home while staying connected and productive? And then there's your newest coworker, the cat. Well, your friends at Trello have been powering remote teams globally for almost a decade. At a time when teams must come together more than ever to solve big challenges, Trello's here to help. Trello, part of Atlassian's collaborative suite, is an app with an easy-to-understand visual format, plus tons of features that make working with your team functional and just plain fun. Trello keeps everyone organized and on the same page, helping teams communicate, focus, and connect. Teams of all shapes and sizes at companies like Google, Fender, Costco, and likely your favorite neighborhood coffee shop all use Trello to collaborate and get work done. Try Trello for free and learn more at Trello.com. That's T-R-E-L-L-O dot com. Trello.com. It's a trying time that challenges all of our basic assumptions. However, one thing that brings us all together is our common humanity. Now more than ever, teams must come together and work together to solve big challenges. And Trello is here to help. Trello, part of Atlassian's collaborative suite, is an app with an easy-to-understand visual format. Plus, tons of features that make working with your team functional and just plain fun. Teams of all shapes and sizes and companies like Google, Fender, and even Costco all use Trello to collaborate and get work done. With Trello, you can work with your team wherever you are, whether it's at home or in an office. No matter what device you're using, computer, tablet, or phone, Trello syncs across all of them, so you can stay up to date on all the things your team cares about. Keep your workflow going from wherever you are with Trello. Try Trello for free and learn more at Trello.com. That's T-R-E-L-L-O dot com. Trello.com. Guys, welcome back to the show. Uh, Eddie Ift, you're, you're doing shows. How can people catch you? You're doing a charity 
like a 68 mile <laughs> run, run why wild. well i i'm attempting it but i'm also you know i plan on uh directing an academy award winning film also so well, i haven't, right, I, haven't we'll, I, I don't know if this will ever get done one of I, those two i happen. said i'd do it this is uh, called dumb solo <laughs> yeah pretty no i got a group of guys coming with me so nice uh, yes yeah, so so you're gonna run idiots. 68 miles where uh the backbone trail it goes from uh the palisades all the way to point magoo and oh I, my God. I pretty much live up there yeah. in the middle of, uh, like in the Malibu mountains. Uh-huh. And uh, I run there all the time. And I was there when the fires happened mm-hmm. and my whole neighborhood burned down. So this is to raise money for that. Yeah. Yeah. For the firefighters. What so day are you doing it? November 22nd. How can people out there, cause it's a great cause. How can people donate S- to Stand you? on the street and hand me like a protein bar or something. Come on, but I want no. them to give to your uh, We haven't set it up yet, but we're doing it. I mean, we're in the midst of it. I'm, you, I'm just starting it. If okay. you follow Eddie I mean, I've been on, training for it already. But. I'm sure you'll mention it on your Twitter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Follow Eddie. me on Twitter or Instagram. I-F-F-T. Yeah, E-D-D-I-E. E-D-D-I-E. Not the Y. I-F-F-T. Not the y. And also come see you live. I know we have fans in Australia too. Yeah. You're there all the time. Yeah, the I'm in Australia a lot. I don't go back for a while, but I'm all over the United States right now. I'm touring until the end of the year. And every week. is there a website they can see all those dates and stuff? Uh, yep, eddieift.com. Great. All right, nice. please go see him. This dude is so fun and funny. And uh, Daniel, any uh, and put the pork chops on your feet before you go. If you're in LA on the 29th of August, I will uh, be running my hour at UCB. Unless this has already happened on the ninth or the tenth, rather, I'll be in Santa Cruz uh, running my hour, doing a, a headlining there at the uh, DNA Comedy lab and also we have a uh, live dumb people town at largo on uh, september 9th I and we are we getting and live dumb people town at the bell house in brooklyn on october uh, 13th. 13th if you i would get your tickets now it is selling out uh and if we do sell it out we may do we'll a second, a second. all right Let's ready go. yes so and where we left was Pe- people were pantomiming Lukak. Lukak and Bo run Lukak and Bo run Lukak, pork chop <laughs> shoe Lukak. Poor, old pork chop foot Lukak. and Boron, the upholstery man. They're flinging pork chops right. everywhere. He was in on it. And pantomiming. Boron, right. Boron sound like Boron the Terrible. Yeah, well, <laughs> he was in on it with Lukak, thinking it was hilarious, throwing pork chops around. That's, just he, re- that's some Bugs Bunny hubris right, right there, because he's I, going I'm thinking down. of the old Seinfeld bit. Yes, officer, his name was Amal, and then uh, the symbol, symbol for Boron. Boron. <laughs> no, no I'm sure it wasn't Manganese. Manganese. I, had I had the periodic, periodic chart, chart with me at the time. Wow. So Mr. Mr. Boron of Oyster Bay in Sydney South was ordered to pay for Lukacs legal costs because he sued him and they were like, no, you did it with the guy. You want to blame the establishment <laughs> for not running a good business? Fine, but you can't blame your wow. buddy that you joked around with that you got hurt. Yeah. Disintegrating. How am I going to write the checks with my broken arm? Right. He refused to make he refused to make any comment. That's Bolron on learning of his damages payout, which was considerably less than. How much do you think he was seeking from the restaurant? For the bar, or the hotel, whatever it was, to make up for his lost upholstery career. Okay, so he's all you can eat bacon for the rest of his life. <laughs> yeah, right. What does that come out to? Bo-ron. Is this a, a, translated into American dollars? It is. Well, yeah. So it's Boron. He received sixty-one thousand. Mm-hmm. He but did. He asked for much more. Apparently. Right. So mm-hmm. what do you think he asked for, Eddie? You want to? You can go first. You can go in between us, which is the Tig Nataro slot, Tig, or you can go third. I'll take the Tigs. All right, Jay, go ahead. Start off. Half a million dollars. Half a million. I Eddie. think he did. Def- oh, no, it's oh yeah, Eddie, yeah. Go ahead. I'm going to say uh, five million. This guy just he yeah, asked for a lot. Yeah. I think like, hmm, I think like two hundred thousand dollars. It's an upholstery career. Come I on. know it's, it's an, an entire career. <laughs> I mean, it could have been a right, upholstery what did you say? career. Two hundred thousand. And what'd you say? Eddie? Five five million. million, five million. And Jason 500, said five hundred thousand. Five hundred thousand. The total amount that Mr. Bolron. The uh, the arm broken man mm-hmm. was seeking. Terrible. He's broken in other ways. Too, right. Let's be honest. Was get your answers in now, Tony, because the total amount is seven hundred and fifty thousand. Whoa! Yeah. I was Way close. Go, yeah, but Eddie was right. I mean, he Eddie, Eddie, he asked for a lot. He did. I mean, he, the he wanted a lot. The Look, court. He's bull on the upholster. Yeah. Here's what I love. The court was told. That the pub continued to serve pork chop Lukak, who said he could, he, <laughs> who, who said that he could remember virtually nothing from his pork chop <laughs> antics. So once he tied meat shoes on, they were like, well, "What do you want? You, you want another beer? You are currently going along with slide, what we asked. slide up here to the bar on some of that pork chop, Grayson. Let's get you a shot, brother. You, you look a little taller." <laughs> <laughs> I wish it was a little bit taller. I wish it was a baller. The, 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 the judicial system's it. a little strange in Australia. I had, I know a comedian there who was uh, in a uh, 
he, it was his wedding. He's a famous comedian in Australia, and he uh, manslaughtered a man. With, what? Yeah, it's a it's a it's an old story, famous story in Australia, and I know the guy very well. Uh, he a guy uh, glassed him uh, right in right in his stomach during at his wedding night. His wedding night because they were in a pub like this, you know, with pork chops and everything. What? And uh, this guy glasses him, which just he, takes a piece well, of sharp glass, breaks a bottle, breaks a bottle, and, and shoves it, it into his stomach. Him yeah, him. and. Uh, he said he had a. He was young. He was like eighteen years old at the time. Yeah. He pulled out a butterfly knife, as you have when you're eighteen. I mean, sure. you're in Australia too. Everyone's got a and knife. And he said he 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 blacked out, and then he woke up in jail, handcuffed, or, or I'm sorry, in the hospital, handcuffed, and uh, he had found out that he had killed the guy. Isn't that I mean, self defense? That's though? what I said, and then he said the judge said I didn't have to stab him forty seven times. Well, that is true. A bit of a kangaroo, k- kangaroo court, if you ask me. So <laughs> Stop it, Jason. <laughs> Stop it right now. <laughs> well, Lukak, this 31 year old shop fitter, has moved to Queensland and said he had. Perfect. Perfect. Said that's, their, that's, I, that's their Florida. That's right, where you so, go. Yeah. He said he had not been put off of meat raffles, but, quote, I just won't wear it, just cook it. He also noted, and this is where we'll end this wonderful story, Jesus that Christ. his friendship with Balron has been strained since the court case. We only hang out twice a month now. Yeah. Right, right. I love that they're just still hanging out. Yeah. <laughs> Look, you got more time now. You're not going to be upholstery. Yeah, 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 yeah. Remember that time when you ruined my upholstery <laughs> career, <laughs> destroyed it <laughs> with your meat shoes? With your goddamn with your pork shop shoes. Why do you stick to red meat instead of the other I, white meat? I know. That is the Thank other you. white meat. Thank you. And it's a killer. Do you hear that? It's a it's a upholstery career killer. It is. Is the other way. I mean, Eddie, if thank you for, hey, thanks uh, for having me, guys. Appreciate coming it. to Dumb People Town, and uh, oh shit, we gotta get back to work. Dumb, 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 Star Avenue, a podcast, <clears throat> a podcast network.